How is everybody doing? I hope you're all well. Hope everybody's in good health and in good spirit. Right, this video is one that I really shouldn't be making until I actually um, listen firsthand um, to the Queen debut album remix, which is going to be released in late October. Right, um, I heard about this about four or five months ago. I was tipped off that the next Queen box set would be the debut album, which was recorded in 1973. It's a snapshot of the band. <laughs> a snapshot of the band. People always say that, don't they? Um, it's the... It's a snapshot of the band uh, f from roughly 1970 to 73 when it was released, but it was delayed by the record company. So it should have really been in, released in around 1971 or 72 or something like that. Um, it was kind of slightly old fashioned uh, by the time it came out, but uh, Queen soon made up for that with the majestic and incredible Queen 2 which was um, a superior album in many ways. But the first Queen album, simply titled Queen, um, it has been called Queen 1 before as well in the CDP CD issues from 1986 on the spine of the actual um, pressing of the UK pressing. Oh. Um, it says Queen One, but the cover artwork is the same um, as the original vinyl LP. But the you know it's got some good songs on it as well, and it perfectly showcases Queen. It's not perfect, um, but it, it showcases the band Mercury's fantastic vocals, um, May's very very unique. Um, guitar sound and it also um, showed Taylor and Deacon as a formidable rhythm section um, it's of its time you know the drums sound a little bit like Ginger Baker and stuff like that you know the big tom sounds and the driving rock rhythms and stuff like that um, people as well critics unfairly um, criticise Queen saying that they were just Zeppelin wannabes and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, a lot of people will probably go crazy over this, but I think Freddie Mercury has definitely a better voice, better. He's a better vocalist than Robert Plant. Um, Robert Plant only got better as he matured. You know, some of the some of the early Zeppelin stuff, he's wailing and stuff like that. And sometimes it's kind of. Sometimes I think it takes from the music, and now don't get me wrong, I am a huge Zeppelin fan. I really enjoy their music. I've everything by Zeppelin. But if you compare the two, you can't really compare the two. I mean, you know, Zeppelin um, are unique in their own way as well. But to as a vocalist, all round vocalist, I think that um, Freddie Mercury has an incredible range and did a lot more acrobatics with his vocal than Plant did. Um, you know, Plant is kind of a blues singer really, um, with a high pitched voice for most part. Uh, not to diss him, you know. Um, but yeah, his kind of lower singing voice then is a little bit Yeah, anyway that's another topic for another discussion. Um but anyway the, um, I heard that this album was going to be the next box set from Queen Productions and I was thinking, I, I guess so. Then I was thinking, ah, why didn't they do Queen 2? That's probably more popular. Um, you know, it's, it has a lot of people were very, very, very influenced by Queen 2. It's a kind of a concept album about fairies and goblins and stuff like that, which lots of bands wrote about back then. But... The debut is getting the spotlight and about three or four weeks ago then I heard that it was a box set with multiple CDs in it. So last week um, 
the official um, veil was lifted on it. It's a box set with a vinyl LP um, and I think six discs or something like that. And there's different um, variations of the box set, picture discs and cassettes and all this kind of stuff. Uh, now, on the Queen website, you can have a look and see what's on it. Um, some of it, fans are already going to have what's on the CDs. Um, BBC Sessions, they've been released a few times already. Um, Live at the Rainbow 74, there's some tracks from that. And then a few odds and sods from later years, which, again, I was I, I never could understand that kind of thing you know it's stick to 1973 stick to you know live stuff from around the same year but don't put stuff from 76 77 on it now uh what else there's an instrumental disc of instrumentals um fine but again like when you listen to queen tracks without Freddie's vocal, you miss the vocal because the vocal is a huge part of it. Um, don't get me wrong, I've often listened to Queen instrumentals because of the, you know, I want to get into the songs and they sound quite different without the vocals, but again, you know, it's stuff you're not going to listen to every day of the week. Um, what else? Uh, there's some uh, D Lane Lay or whatever studio that was, the demos that got the band signed. They're there. I think they've been released before as well and there's works in progress and studio outtakes and stuff like that which is the disc that everybody's going to want to hear but the album itself has been remixed remixed r-e-m-i-x-e-d remixed okay now this is a big 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 um point of debate at the moment um they have released a single from the album and it's the night comes down most queen fans will know this song a kind of an acoustic style it's typical queen fair you know brian may's guitar floating in the background nice drums on it um it's a little bit kind of hippy dippy to me it's never not my favorite song from the album I think Liar is a fantastic track. Keep Yourself Alive is a great single as well. Um, great King Rat is another good one. Um, Son and Daughter, that's probably the most Zeppelin thing on it, Like, but it's still, yeah. Um, and new things like Jesus, which I never really liked. Uh, they've also added Mad the Swine, which was a, a, a B-side. Um, it also was tampered with, I think, around 1991 on an innuendo CD single. I think the drums are redone or something like that. But yeah, that's not a bad song. But again, it's kind of, it's not, it isn't bad. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's, you know, it was meant to go on the album. The band say that the album is now going to sound like they really wanted it back then. But you know, are they rewriting history? Um, yeah, are they rewriting history? Is that what is that the new thing? Are they going to go through the catalogue? Is that what everybody's going to do? I mean, I know the Beatles have been tampering with the catalogue and making the 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 the, the four track uh, stereo masters. They've been turning those into more of a spectrum where you get kind of the drums back properly panned left and right. Instead of just here or there and the bases in the middle. It, they sound like they recorded in the 70s. Now, Revolver sounds like it was recorded in the 70s. The way it's done, you know what I mean? It's like Fleetwood Mac, you know, in the 70s. You know, you've got the, the 16 track or whatever. 24 track was out back then. You've got a fuller sound. Uh, I think it works with the Beatles. I like it. But uh, the night comes down. I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are saying it if you look on YouTube that they have tampered with the vocal and they've done something like pitch correction. And, um, oh, you know, I was busy for the last two days of work now and I'm quite tired. But this whole thing is kind of like pitch correction on Freddie Mercury. If it's 100% true, I haven't heard the album yet, but I didn't like The Night Comes Down. 
Um, it sounded a bit strange. There's a video to go with it too, an AI generated video or something like that, and it's awful. Like you know, it's it's one of these horrible montages. There's some footage in it, but in this kind of this animation stuff, it's awful. Like you know, um, it's just to you know, it's look. I guess you know, <clears throat> BMX and skateboards were everywhere back in and break dancing were everywhere back in the mid eighties. Um, you know. <laughs> Compact disc was everywhere by the late 80s. You know, th these trends come and go, you know, computer graphics, PlayStation 1, you know yourself. So, yeah, I mean, you don't have to look at the video. But my biggest fear is this is a box set. Fans are going to buy the box set or, you know, is the whole album mixed and, and completely tweaked within an inch of its life to make it sound absolutely perfect? Because I don't think there's a need to do that. Artists start doing that. I think it's kind of the writing on the wall, really, because like pitch correction like that makes no sense like I, I mean what if i said oh i'm speaking up and down and it's you know wavering around the place you know and i put my voice for this video through a pitch corrector i would sound like a robot you know and, and i hate videos on youtube that have uh, the robot voice you know do this every day and blah 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 they just oh you know but anyway there's a lot of controversy about this uh like i said there's another five six weeks to go before i'll actually own it uh, i was quite excited about it being be, coming out you know but when i saw that half the discs on it i have i have i have about 80 percent i must have 70 percent of the music in the box you know but you know as a fan you know i'm i'm listening to i've been buying queen since 1985 so nearly 40 years i've everything by queen and i have about 350 items or more um and i think that you know if this album is remixed and tweaked to perfection and it sounds horrible or if it's like novelty and you don't want to listen to it again well what is the point of doing that because fans are very very i can understand uh, the younger generation saying, yeah, that sounds great because they're used to that horrible, um, you know, that, 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 that kind of horrible auto-tune pitch correction in music. Everybody uses it, you know, and I just get tired. It, it just, I won't, I just can't listen to stuff like that, you know, I just hate it. Um, you know, maybe I'm getting old fashioned or maybe I am old, maybe I'm getting old and I'm just old fashioned, but you know, look, I listen to all kinds of music, but, um, you know, you have to leave the flaws in. That's what makes a human. I mean, a good example is Miles Davis. I mean, technically a musical genius and created some of the most groundbreaking and important music of the last hundred years to come out of America, come out of jazz, uh, jazz itself. But Miles Davis has a sound, but he's uh not uh, I, I i it's hard to explain i don't think he's a, he's a i don't think he's a virtuoso trumpet player as such you know compared to other guys like you know um uh, there was loads of guys technically better than miles davis you know but still miles davis my computer is after going into sleep mode and I'm using the light to uh, illuminate this video, <laughs> uh, you know, but he picked out the best players. He got the best music. He got the best playing out of out of the players. But if you went back and said, oh, yeah, that solo is a bit kind of funny from Miles. Let's tweak it and get it perfect. Again, you know, you're treading on a fine line. Um, I like all Miles Davis's albums and I think I have 95 percent of them. Um, but I'd hate to think that they would, you know, that someone would come along with new technology and change things. Queen, I mean, I know every single song, every single note on the albums. They're here behind me. I don't know if you can see them. All the remasters, all the box sets, all the originals. I have everything, you know. I've, I've got three or four different uh, CD editions. Uh, you know, they take up two shelves. Um, but, yeah um you know is is queen 
if you look, there's a guy on YouTube, Darren Locke. He's uh, he reviews music. He's a musician. Uh, he lives in England um, and he's quite funny. He's a bit he's got a dry sense of humour. And uh, he's actually I used, I used to listen to all this stuff because he's very good with Prague and stuff. He's really into Prague. So like he'll do a lot of Mike Oldfield and all these bands, I think, like Genesis, King Crimson. Yes, um, I'm just getting into Yes at the moment as well. Fantastic band. Uh, really, really good. Should have got into them years ago. But anyway, um, he was so disgusted with the Night Comes Down that he actually... He was actually nearly crying. He was in a kind of a, a state of of disbelief. You know, he was like a rabbit in the headlights. And he actually stripped the song down to the stems and he remixed it himself on Logic or Pro Tools or something. That's how upset he got. And he said, maybe I shouldn't be so upset. But it's kind of getting to me. Um, you know, I don't want... Um, I don't want to buy music from Queen that has been tweaked and retooled. I don't mind remixes. I actually don't mind a remix. Make the bass cleaner, make it nicer, make it whatever. But don't add in bits and pieces. Don't retweak the drums with modern samples. Like Queen, the debut album is 52 or 3 years old. That's They're analog masters in a vault somewhere. They've obviously taken them, digitized them. They've stuck them into a computer and now they've, you know, they've pooped them out in some form. Now, again, six weeks to go. I'm not sure. I'm not looking forward to it now because of this single night comes down. Sounds terrible. Like, you know, and I'm not just saying it for the sake of saying it. Uh, I didn't like what I heard. The original is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I think the Bob Ludwig basses were great. But now Queen have gone back taking his album and they said oh look this is the way it should sound i mean it's like the beatles uh let it be nude or something i didn't like that i prefer the original the phil Spector one that people said oh that's terrible it's a, it, that has that has the feel it's that's a great let it be is a great album i love let it be i love late beatles um i didn't like the the nude version of it or the naked version whatever you want to call it i listened to it once or twice um, I prefer the original. It sounds great. And I don't mind if they remaster it. They did, and I bought it. And I still like it. Um, yeah, so rewriting history. Bands seem to do it, especially bands with big followings. Um, I think, you know, should keep it as it is. Another thing they've done as well, which I haven't said already, they've called it Queen One now. So, you know, on your on your music shelf, you're going to see Queen One, Queen Two. You know, it's it's... I don't know. I mean, Led Zeppelin. Let's let's take let's. Where is it? The first Led Zeppelin album is called Led Zeppelin, and then you had two, three, four, and then Houses of the Holy. What if next year, Plant and Page decide? Hang on a second. It should be Led Zeppelin one. It was called Led Zeppelin because that was the band, and that was it. Led Zeppelin. And then I suppose like they didn't want to put a song title on the second one. So, you know, Led Zeppelin 2 could have been called Whole Lot of Love. You know, that's a long track on the album. Could have been called Moby Dick. You know what I mean? Um, but no, you know, it's just that. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, here we have it. Uh, where is it? Up here. This is the original. I'm going to end the video on this note. Here we go. Oh, where's it gone? I'm going to end the video on this note. This is Queen. This is an EMI pressing from back in the old days. This is an original. and Or maybe a repress or something like that. But it's still from the 70s. You know, it's got to... And I bought this in... Oh, I don't know. 1987, I can't remember. But look, it's got that beautiful EMI salmon and red logo. I love that logo. It's look, it looks great. And there was a logo down here as well. You can barely see it, but it's it's, it's in here. EMI, that round logo they used in the seventies. Uh, so that's it. That's Queen. We've got to hear this soon, and um, hopefully, I don't know. I got a bad feeling in my stomach. 
um anyway so thanks for watching feel free to subscribe and take care